Good morning, um, my name is Daniel and I'm going to be taking you through the webinar today on the basics of payroll in the UK. Um, firstly, thank you very much for giving up your time to come and join us today and I hope you find today's uh, webinar useful. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll have a Q&A session where we'll answer as many questions as we can. Any we don't get to in the time frame, we'll, um, we'll reply afterwards with some answers as best as we, as best we can. If you want to ask the questions as we go through the session, you'll see there's a Q&A button um, on your taskbar. Um, if you click on the Q&A, feel free to answer the questions and uh, we'll get to those at the end of the session. <clears throat> so the agenda of the things we're gonna to cover today is um, what is payroll legislation um, and what does the legislation cover and how does it affect payroll? Um, how to set, set up and manage a payroll and what records you need to keep in order to maintain your payroll and also uh, what payroll software can do and how it can help. So the first part of uh, running and managing a payroll in the UK is the payroll legislation. There's multiple acts that uh, govern how payroll is treated in the UK, um, and it can seem very daunting um, to manage. The UK has an extensive legislation framework covering in payroll, employment law. Here are the main ones that uh, you need to know about. First one is the Employment right act, Rights Act 1996. This is a primary legislation for workers in the UK. Uh, you, the Employment Rights Act governs the types of contracts, the working hours, the entitlement to be paid to part-time workers also. It also governs authorised and unauthorised deductions and the protection of employees working and to have unauthorised deductions from, made from their wages. It also covers things like late payment of wages and deductions of wages. So it really covers the framework of uh, contracts within uh, the employees' rights. We also have the Minimum Wage Act, and this governs the minimum amount of money that you can um, pay an employee. And there's different rates depending on the ages of the employee that's uh, covered. Uh, and, it, and it governs it above the school leaving age. Um, and obviously the, the gov UK government website, um, gov.uk, has a whole load of information governing that and you can go and research that information but it's really critical that you make sure that you are covered by that because there are penalties if you man do not pay uh, employees at the right rate of pay. The next two is the part-time workers uh, prevention of uh, favourable treatment regulation 2000 agency working 2000. These laws provide the rights to part-time workers to ensure equal pay and fair treatment uh, and enshrines their rights not to be treated less favourable than full-time workers. Then we have the Income Tax Earnings and Pensions Act and Income Tax Act 2007. This act governs the treatment of payroll tax in the UK um, and tax for self-employed and governed by self-tax uh, system. Essentially, it really just governs the amount of uh, tax, how tax is treated and how tax is deducted from, from employees' wages, um, and also uh, and how tax is treated. We also have the National Insurance Act. Uh, this legislation provides a system of social security in the UK. Um, national insurance contributions over a number of years give employees entitlement to state benefits from working for workers and their families. When the employee is paid above a certain level of contributions uh, and are made both uh, by the employee and employer, national insurance is paid alongside PAYE. As an employer, you will take it from the employee's wages before they get paid, um, before they get paid, and the amount paid will be shown on their pay slip. Off working uh, rules, um, off working rules uh, IR 35 used to be uh, very exclusive to the public sector, but then was extended into the private sector. This covers uh, working, uh, defines whether an employee is a worker or a contractor, and you need to go through a, an assessment of all employees to, um, or all contractors to assign whether they're off working 
on IR32. Uh, if they are deemed to be an on-working uh, payroll contractor, then you need to work out the right um, tax and national insurance and pay them through the payroll as such. We also have the Pension Act uh, 2008. This act obliges employees to set up their contributions to a pension plan for their employees, uh, enabling the enabling employees must be um, enrolled in a pension scheme within three months of employment. Um, and it was really designed to make sure that um, all employees were signed up to a pension scheme um, um, and its contribution. The pension regulators website has a whole host of information to determine whether employees are eligible or non-eligible or whether they need to be signed up. Uh, and it also goes into these things about deferring and uh, which pension providers you can choose to sign up. National insurance and tax payments. So national insurance, uh, sorry, the amount of um, income tax you deduct from your employee depends on the tax code that you assign to them. And HMRC will assign the tax codes for you um, via a notice. And, um, and it will determine how much personal allowance an employee gets. So the personal allowance is the amount of money that before they get taxed through the re regulations, through tax levels. Um, I would advise you to check the uh, UK government website for up-to-date information on personal allowance because it changes with every um, budget uh, on the beginning of each tax year. Scotland actually has different bands of tax uh, from the rest of the UK. Um, and Wales uh, also has the right to have different tax bands, but currently is the same as the UK. The amount of national insurance that uh, you pay depends on the employee status and how much they earn, very much like PAYE, uh, and it's the employer's responsibility to calculate. Generally, um, workers pay class one national insurance contributions, but these categories will be paid, but there are categories that would pay less. So for, for example, um, if an employee is, uh, above state pension age and still working or they're below, then there's different rates and that's determined by the national insurance letter. Employees pay uh, a different rate of national insurance depending on the employee category letter as well. So national insurance, uh, PAYE is just paid by the employee. National insurance is paid by the employee and employer. Pay-as-you-earn uh, is a UK uh, HMRC um, customer's excise system to collect tax and national insurance from your from wages. An employee usually needs to pay, run to pay by YE as part of their payroll. If you need to register for PAYE, um, you do not need to register for PAYE if none of your employees are paid uh, £123 or more in a week, expenses and benefits, or have another another job or pension. Whether or not you need to register for PAYE, it's really important that you all keep uh, accurate records of all payments made to employees. A PAYE reference number um, yeah, is different from a payroll number, so when we're looking at the difference uh, there, there needs to be, you need to collect both of those. An employer's PAY reference number is given to every business when they register with HMRC. It's a unique set of letters and numbers and needs to be displayed on things like pay slips and, and forms, tax forms. A payroll number is a unique number given to the employee working at a specific company and helps identify them and store their records within the companies. Often payroll systems will automatically allocate this number for you. Even if you don't need to register with HMRC for PAYE, then you do need to make sure you still keep accurate records. So in this next section, we're gonna go and talk through how to set up and manage a payroll. So here's a checklist of sort of things we recommend that you do uh, if you're setting up a new company or taking on the responsibility of managing a payroll. So the first thing to do is tell them HMRC and register as an employer. Um, 
as well one of the regulations is to obviously manage and provide a workplace pension so you need to register um, with a pension provider for auto enrollment you need to choose um, a payroll software to report with HMRC. Uh, your software <coughs> must report uh, online unless you're exempt, and that's mainly just the small businesses. You need to collect and record all your records and keep them for a minimum of three years. Uh, you need to tell HMRC uh, about your employees, give them information about the employee's work and tax codes, and if you don't have a P45, you can then use the HMRC's employee start checklist, which will then help you determine which tax code to start them on. Record, pay, make deductions and report to a HMRC on or before the first payment date. Um, and then the other part is you need to pay HMRC and taxes after you've paid them. You need to record employee salaries and wages in your payroll system. You must include everyone you pay, even if they earn less than £123 in a week. The way that you uh, communicate with HMRC is through what we call the full payment summary, also known as the FPS. Every time you pay your employees, you must pay, uh, submit the FPS document to HMRC on or before the payment date. The FPS will include typical information about the employee's uh, name and address, national insurance stump, and tax code you've used within that pay run. Information about the employee's pay, including employee's salary and net salary, and how much income tax and uh, national insurance are due, and what an employer owes to HMRC. Any updates to new employees and uh, employees that have left is also transmitted through the FPS. There are certain exemptions for some empl employees don't need to report online, but uh, these got, this can be found on the exemption can be found on HMRC. If you manage the payroll yourself, uh, you need to report your employees payments and deductions to HMRC on or before the payday. Uh, small businesses who pay less than £1,500 a month can contact HMRC and arrange to pay quarterly if it benefits your cash flow to do that. Payroll software can make running your payroll a lot easier. Um, your payroll software can calculate how much tax national insurance and pension contributions you owe, including your employer's national insurance contributions each. Uh, each employee earns above 775 pounds a week. So it really takes the stress of having to manually calculate all of those things. Your employee software can submit the FPS and EPS to HMRC to notify them of payments you've made uh, to your employees and deductions you've made. Um, and also, we recommend that you also use an HMRC recognised payroll system. And again, the Gov.uk UK website will list all of the providers that are recognised by HMRC. One of the important parts of running a payroll is to provide your employees with a payslip at the end of each pay run. Um, the payslip must show the gross pay before any deductions are made. All deductions, including tax and national insurance contributions, net pay, and where there, um, there has been variance in hours. So for example, you have a salary worker that works overtime, or you have an employee that's paid variable hours, uh, you need to show the number of hours in order to um, manage the working time directives. Payslips can be printed or um, sent to the employee electronically, and you can uh, use your payroll software to provide these payslips. Record keeping. So as we mentioned earlier on, it's really important to keep the accurate records for your employees. Um, as an employee, you are legally responsible for completing all payroll tasks even if you have somebody else doing it for you, such as the payroll bureau or your accountant. Uh, the record you must keep is how much you've paid your employees, any deductions you've made from your employees' record and pay, um, reports you've made to HMRC and payments you've made to HMRC. Employees' leave and sickness, absence, tax notices, um, tax and expenses and benefits, and then documentation of charitable donations via payroll, share giving, including agency contracts um, 
etc. It's also important to keep these records for a minimum of three years, which is the statutory requirement for keeping tax records. Um, and but obviously that the you've obviously also got to consider the fact of GDPR. So you've got to consider the maximum length as well. So what to record in your payroll system? Uh, so the, the types of payments, uh, you may also need to record in your payment system things like statutory sick pay, um, statutory pay for pensions, and parental pay. Uh, these records in your payroll software include the tax you've calculated and normal pay. There's also um, tips. So um, it may be if you're in the hospitality industry that you um, need to record the tips that you paid. And this is not often managed through a system called Trunk. Um, HMRC can give you more information on that. Um, and it also may affect the employee's self-assessment and personal tax records. Expenses and benefit is another area that uh, you may need to consider. So as an employee, you'll need to report expenses and benefits that you provide to your employee that haven't been directly paid to the employee. Um, you may need to pay tax and national insurance on these, um, and these are managed through either payrolling of benefits or through the P11D, which is the annual report. Expenses and benefits like uniforms and company cars are all reported separately, and this is done through an annual return. The UK government has guidelines on expenses and benefits and what you should report in your software as normal pay. Your employing software will calculate your deductions for you, um, such as tax and national insurance that need to be taken from the employee's uh, gross salary. Um, and this will be in accordance with the employee's tax code and national insurance category. Other deductions you may see through the payroll are things like student loans, repayments, pension contributions, payroll giving donations, child maintenance payments and court orders. So other useful tips is making changes to your payroll. So you must tell HMRC of any changes such as when the new employee starts and leaves um, or becomes a director because they're, for example, their national insurance might be treated differently if they are a director. You also must tell HMRC when you start paying the workplace pension. So you can also correct mistakes with the employee's pay and deductions and update the year to date figures on the next FPS. Alternatively, you can correct it uh, with an additional FPS before the regular FPS is due. You can change your pay date um, and change how often you pay your employees, but you'll need to contact HMRC Employees Helpline for guidance on this. Because for example, uh, payroll in the UK and, uh, and the way the tax tables work depends on the date um, if it's before or after the fifth of each month. So for example, if you move the pay date after the fifth, then you could be um, taxing twice in a month uh, on the move date. So it's really good to plan that out and speak to HMRC for further advice. So once you've take, uh, calculated all your wages and paid your net wages over to HMRC, the, obviously the next part is to pay HMRC. Um, so you need to pay HMRC by the 22nd of each month. Um, if you pay by post, you must be paid by the 19th. Uh, you will pay your tax and national insurance you've reported to HMRC or in your full payments from that summary submitted by your payroll software. You can check your HMRC online account to view the report of what you've submitted um, and to see how much you owe and make payments. But again, your payroll software will also assist you with that. If for any reason you report late, um, if you're employing, if you've paid your employees but don't send your FPS or the FPS late, HMRC will send you a late filing notice. 
This is an electronic notice to remind you to pay. HMRC can also charge you a penalty if you pay, if you don't provide a valid reason for submitting late. And again, when you submit your FPS late, you can also select the relevant uh, reason for late submission. So with everything that's happened recently, um, Brexit seems a long way away, but uh, Brexit did have a big impact on payroll within the UK. Uh, the UK now has the power to make changes to employment law coming from Europe, including the Working Time Directive. Uh, workers' rights enshrined in the Working Time Directive remain as follows. Uh, workers are restricted to working for no more than 48 hours per week. Uh, workers are entitled to 28 days paid holiday uh, per year. Workers should work, should get a minimum of 20 minutes break for every six hours works and an employees working for three or more hours between 11 and 6 a.m. are deemed to be night workers um, and working hours should not exceed eight hours. A draft employment bill has been tabled, but for for the time being, UK is still governed under the European regulations, including the Working Time Directive. An employee does have the right to um, opt out of the Working Time Directive, uh, but an employee cannot force the employee to opt out. If an employee does opt out of the Working Time Directive, the employee can opt that back in at any time. With payroll, you're holding a lot of personal um, information uh, about the data protection. So data protection is always a big part of uh, managing payroll in the UK. If your business stores personal information, including information on employees, such as their name, address, working hours, then you are required to follow the uh, data protection or GDPR rules, and you must register for GDPR. The rule the rules require you to keep the information secure, accurate and up to date and also deems the retention period that you must keep the data for or the destroy the data. For more information on GDPR, again, UKGov or gov.uk website uh, is a really good source of accurate information. As I mentioned uh, previously, payroll software can make managing your payroll uh, easier. Payroll software uh, is an on-premise or cloud-based solution that manages and maintains and automates the payroll to employees. This can help you stay compliant and streamline your payroll operations. Automated payrolls can instantly calculate contributions, deducts, um, track time, attendance, generate accurate data and take care of the workforce planning within uh, a centralized place and make sure you stay compliant. Employment here, here is HMRC recognized payroll software makes processing payroll easy. Its purpose is built for small and medium sized businesses platform uses automation to make every part of running payroll simple and make our, and our helpful tools help you manage parts of your payroll process. Some benefits include saying goodbye to admin. So within our payroll software, we have automation built in to create the pay runs, import timesheets, supply leave requests, and publish pay slips, along with a lot more. If you need to manage the resources of your employees, um, then the our rotoring and management time attendance solution can help budget and allocate staff shifts on shift skill requirements, enable shift swapping and shift bidding so you can get uh, people to bid in for shifts and uh, get, get the resources you need at the time you need them, and automate timesheets and, uh, and bring those timesheets into the payroll, uh, logging the start times, the end times, break times, and along also including our rules engine to help manage and, and uh, analyze the overtime for you. It's also HMRC compliant, uh, make sure your HMRC compliant reporting 
removal of frustration and improve your compliance with automation, HMRC real-time information, RTI reporting, and submit all the required information with just a few clicks. We all like to take holidays, so uh, within our payroll software, we have, a, have leave management. Your team can request leave on the go through their mobile or a desktop app. Managers can easily see the whole team's leave in the schedule and manage and approve leave uh, ongoing. It's not just payroll that, uh, that, that affects the payroll. So we have really smart payroll integration, syncing your payroll with things like your chart of accounts or your HMRC system. Easy to convert, convert a, enjoy the convenience of a fully integrated HR and payroll system. Now, payroll may sound very daunting to you. So um, there is also the option of uh, manage payrolls, but payroll be uh, in-house payroll is ultimately up to you whether you choose to use an external payroll provider such as an accountant or a payroll bureau, or bring your payroll in-house and manage it in-house. Understandably, some business owners might believe it's easier to outsource it. However, pay completing payroll yourself is not as uh, difficult and time consuming as you might think. Investing in your payroll software can save you money on outsourcing without putting a strain on your headcount, as well as promoting um, processing uh, automated and streamlined. So we have some time uh, if you have any questions. So we've got a, a question here which has been answered. If an employee changes their tax code while employed, uh, will HMRC update their tax code automatically? So HMRC, so typically a payroll software will, uh, that's connected to HMRC will bring down tax code changes automatically. Um, it's, it's good practice to only uh, manage uh, the, the tax code change if you've be, received a paper notification from HMRC or electronic notification through uh, real-time information. Uh, often you'll have employees coming and telling you their tax code needs to be changed. Uh, it's advisable to only deal with it from HMRC. And another question will be given a copy of these slides at the end. Yes, we'll give those along with any questions that we haven't answered. So how often do tax codes change and under which circumstances? So tax codes can change um, on a personal level, so an employee's tax code can change. For example, if they receive, start having a company car, um, that can have an effect, so any benefits can affect their tax code. Um, or if they take on married person's allowance, um, and that can increase their tax code. For example, if you're working from home, you might create, uh, claim the allowance for working from home, and that again can increase your tax code. The personal allowance changes generally every year, unless there's an emergency budget. Um, and that tax code change will um, affect the tax code that's applied to an employee. So we've just been asked a question here, um, uh, what's responsibly as an employer to check the employee is a tax resident in the UK before deducting taxes? So it is important to, uh, to check that they are that they have a national insurance number and that they are registered uh, to. And so for anyone that's basically working within the UK uh, should be reported through your payroll system. There is a uh, there is a, a period which if somebody comes across and works with you that they can work in the UK, depending on their visas, um, without having to be included in the payroll but all the information is uh, available on the HMRC website. <laughs> Got a, uh, a question here about uh, what's the, uh, the best HR and payroll software currently integrated. Uh, I think we would, uh, well, I'm biased, but I would say that ours is very good at integration, but again, um, th there's lots of things to look at within that uh, and consider. Uh, but generally, having a, an HR and payroll system that is fully integrated together 
will save a lot of time um, and, and effort and ensure that the information that you're paying within the payroll system is accurate. So just had another question about uh, does payroll uh, manage holidays and overtime commission, et cetera? So yes, uh, generally payroll systems can manage your holidays within the systems. Um, so for example, ours will manage that you can create a holiday set up within the system and uh, also the uh, accrual basis that you need um, and, and manage that for you. Um, and also, for example, you might have leave templates within your payroll system, which will allow you to group employees that have different holiday circumstances. For example, part-time or variable worker hours will be treated differently for holiday than uh, full-time employees. And then that, that will manage the payments of holidays that are needed if, if their payments carried over holidays. Um, overtime systems can generally be managed, overtime can be managed within payroll as well. So you can set up rules within payroll that will manage the payroll and have different pay types to calculate based on time and a half. But it depends on the complexity of the payroll, whether it'll be a, how, how, com how easy it is to manage that within the system. Well, thank you very much for attending today. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you with us for the last half an hour. Um, and uh, thank you very much. After this uh, session, we will be sending the slides and the, the recording out to everybody, along with uh, any questions that we haven't answered today. Thank you very much. <laughs>